No, I don't waste no time Well, what's going on guys and welcome back to a new video for those of you that are new to the channel. My name is Joshua Daniel George, a social media marketer and online coach. I have my own social media agency where I basically help businesses get more leads and more sales through Facebook advertisements. And a week ago, I spent basically put up a income story saying, you know, ask me anything, uh, put up the little question bar where people can ask me questions. And I didn't answer a single question. I completely forgot about it. And I was just too caught up with uh, working on, you know, various projects that I'm working on. And also I'm in the process of uh, moving house, which is also the reason why I'm recording this on my iPhone and I'm recording, um, you know, basically with this little mic here because I left my camera in my new home or my new apartment basically so uh, recording this on the iphone so i'm curious to see how this actually turns out the quality of the iphone is fine to be fair but um there's no flip screen so i've got no idea if i'm actually you know uh centered or anything like that but we just have to make the best of it and uh, like i said the questions that i got in that little ask me anything bar on uh, instagram i've basically just uh, written down in my notes i've got them on my desktop here can't actually use my phone because i'm recording on my phone so uh, I'm just gonna basically read the questions out loud and then just answer them here, um, you know, for you guys on YouTube. So the first question I got is, how many ecom prospects do you have to email in order to set a meeting? And this is one of those questions, right, where it's like, how long is a piece of string? It completely depends on how many businesses, um, you know, actually see and read your email, how many emails bounce, your subject line, uh, also what you mentioned in the copy, the call to action, and so on and so forth. So there isn't a direct answer to it. Um, in terms of how we get clients, we use cold email a lot and we've got this completely automated. We call it the hybrid outreach system. Why? Because half of it is outsourced and then the other half is automated. In your case, if you are not part of the coaching program, what I will do is uh, send emails, you know, basically just scrape emails from um, myip.ms, which is like a Ecom database where you can get all the ecom stores. I've got a video on it called um, How to Reach Out to Ecom Clients or anything like that. There's two of them on my YouTube channel, so make sure you check them out. And um, what you then need to do is send them an email, very short, just say, Hey, I like the look of your store, I've got some ideas for you. Is it okay if I send you a quick video? Then you send them a Loom video if they say yes, obviously, um, giving them you know some value sizzle not the steak so basically tell them what they can do not how to actually do it and just say listen i value your time if you want to know more let's hop on a quick call and then on the call you ask them questions about their business where they're currently at where they want to go to if you think you can do a good job for them if you think you can help them then you know obviously then you pitch your service so prior to that you don't actually mention that you're a social media agency owner or anything like that which i see a lot of uh, you know a lot of people doing they send out these big long email blasts saying i am an agency owner i help businesses do this and that and then the call to action directly is to book a call and calendly and stuff like that it doesn't work guys just don't, don't even try it because just try and provide value first ask them some questions about their business ask them if it's okay to send a video i will notice that your engagement rate your reply rate etc will increase okay next question is sma smma harder if you are younger even this question it depends why because yes as someone that is older you will be treated more with respect and you will also you know have more of an authority position basically because you are older um but with that said, if you are older, you also have other things to worry about. You might have a girlfriend, you might have a wife, you might have kids, you might have a mortgage, you might have overhead costs that are through the roof. Whereas if you are younger, you probably don't have all of those, those costs and added stresses, which means that you can go into those calls much more relaxed, which also means that you aren't necessarily really focused on the clothes. Because I've noticed if I really need the business and that I've got that scarcity mindset, I won't close the deal. So if you are more relaxed, you know, you'll basically come across as ne less needy and then, you know, therefore it will be easier to actually close a deal. So it's not necessarily harder or if you are younger, it's just all a matter of perspective because if you are younger as well, you know, you basically have something that the business owner doesn't, which is knowledge on social media, knowledge on the current landscape, knowledge on how all of this works. You are 
basically raised by the internet, right? You're born with social media, born with Wi-Fi, born with the internet. And these business owners, more often than not, are not actually, you know, born in that generation. You know, they are born earlier than that and therefore don't really have the knowledge on social media and don't really know what is possible. Next question, is it a good time to go for a USA client? To be fair, it's a, it's a good as time as any. Like literally, it it doesn't matter. You know, there is never going to be a perfect time. The stars are never going to align in your favor. But you know, the universe isn't going to go out there and try and you know try and like basically make it harder for you if you know what I mean. So it's a good as time as any. Even when the pandemic hit its height, you know, when everyone was basically stressed out of their minds, we still managed to land three US-based clients. And also when um, it was like worst in Italy, one of our coaching students who is from Italy actually managed to get a Italian client as well. So it's one of them, you know, it, it it's a good time as any and you best just getting started. Rather than asking questions like this, again, you know, there's, there's no such thing as a dumb question. I don't mean that, that, you know, in that way, but rather than contemplating it, just go out and test it out for yourself and you'll notice that you know like i said it's all a matter of you know reaching the right person at the right time building up the right relationship at the right time um and it's a good a time as any so next question how did you get your fit oh how do you how did you get your first client sorry and how can i automate outreach so as i mentioned in the coaching program we have the uh, hybrid outreach system for outreach which is automated and what you need to do in terms of outreach automation is look at what you're currently doing, look at how you're currently reaching out to your potential clients and ask yourself, is what I'm doing, you know, can a robot do what I'm doing? If the answer is yes, so if a robot, let's say for example, you've, you've mapped it out, so you've got like step one, do this, step two, do this, step three, do this, map out what a robot could basically take over. Just think to yourself like, is what I'm not currently doing, could that be done by a robot? If the answer is yes, then try and automate it, try and systemize and streamline that process, find software, um, etc., to automate that process, okay? Obviously, if a robot cannot do it, you need to either find someone that can do it in terms of outsourcing, or you'll need to do it yourself. Now, with that said, there are two things we can leverage in life. Number one is obviously our cash flow. If you cannot leverage your cash flow, if you haven't got the financial resources to leverage your cash flow, then you will need to leverage your time and you will need to do it manually. Okay. In terms of how I got my first clients, um, when I started out, I sent you know a few proposals, a few audits, and didn't get really get any reply whatsoever. And then um, I basically just reached out to my network. You know, not, not not a lot of people were interested. But what I then did was I told everyone, listen, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start my own social media agency. If you can get me a meeting or get me you know someone that is interested and I land the client, I will give you 10% commission recurrent for every month that that client stays. Then my network started to reach out to their network and started getting me meetings for me. And that made it much, much easier because basically they're reaching out on my behalf. They're setting the meetings for me. It's almost like having appointment setters, right? From there, I got my first few successful meetings and also my first clients. Then after that, I discovered the world of freelancer websites and that is how I got the ball rolling. Okay, so that is how I got started. Looking back, uh, the freelancer method is still tried and true. It's, you know, it is getting a bit crowded, but it's still possible. If you want to know how to, you know, use the freelancer method, how to get your first client by using Upwork, etc. I do have a 100% free beginner course on this. There are two ways to get it. The first way is to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I run ads to my subscriber list. Um, literally just a 30 second ad on, you know, on the, the free course basically. And then from there you can sign up. It's like an unpublished teachable course. So you'll get the link and then from there you'll get the course. Or if you're, if you don't want, you know, if you're on YouTube premium or you don't want to wait for the ads, you can also request access to my free Facebook group. Um, it's called the Lifestyle Design Community. It's all about social media marketing, how to get your first clients, etc. Um, and in that group, one of the free resources is also the beginner course. So there are two ways to get that, and that will explain the Upwork method. So moving on, Facebook lead forms or click funnels. This depends on the clients, in my opinion. Uh, Facebook lead forms is great for getting a lot of leads, but the one thing with Facebook is that the forms are all automatically filled out. So if a potential client clicks on your lead form, name, email address, and telephone number will automatically be filled out for them, which is great for us because we can get a lot of leads. But 
that doesn't necessarily ensure the quality of the lead because they don't need to do anything you know they could just fill fill out that form click on the form fill it out and you know provide their information to you but that does not necessarily mean that they're serious whereas with click funnels they need to fill all of that out themselves which means that you'll get less leads but the leads that you get are of a higher quality because they've put in the effort right they've put in all of that effort to fill it all out for you and therefore you know that is how um, you've got the leads and you know you know they're a bit more qualified so if you're going to use facebook lead forms add more questions to make sure that the quality is there and that they have to put in effort to you know actually become a lead and if you use click funnels then obviously you know you need to basically find that balance between um the cost per lead but also you know the amount of leads that you're getting etc and you know the amount of or the quality of the leads um you know make sure that that is of an adequate quality Okay, so um, those were the sort of SRMA questions. In terms of the agency, um, how much is your agency doing per month right now in monthly recurring revenue? Um, actually, funny you should ask that because I've literally just sent my numbers to my accountant. Um, so the agency is currently doing 15,000 euros in revenue. Now, bear in mind, I do have a full-time employee, which you know basically um, takes a wage out of that. You also pay tax over that, and I've got about six... Um, yeah, about 600 euros in software costs as well, including, you know, ClickFunnels, Teachable, etc. Um, so, you know, just make sure, just, just understand that, you know, that obviously goes off of that. And then obviously, you know, I'm also going to take um, a wage out of that as well, which um, I actually previously didn't do. You know, it's only been since this month that I'm doing that. I used to always keep as much as possible in the business and take out, the, you know, the least amount possible. Um, and you know, obviously, you know, from September onwards, I'm actually going to uh, to change that so that I also get a wage from it. Um, the reason, obviously, for that, because I'm moving, you know, I'm moving to a new apartment in Amsterdam. Um, I want to start getting you know some stuff, some furniture, etc. So I will actually need to take some money out of the business. And um, it's funny because people ask me like, so you in? You know, how much do you actually earn? And I, I, I sometimes, you know, make a joke. I say nothing. I don't earn anything. You know, I keep it all in the business. And um, they always say, well, why don't you like? buy a car or do this or you know i don't know lisa lambo and stuff like that i don't think like because that's just something that doesn't really interest me right i would rather keep it in the business and grow the business you know put it all back you know brampton is my my baby right like that's something that i really want to grow and scale and if i'm constantly taking money out to sort of be flashy about you know look at me look have you know look at the new car i bought you know then the, you're taking that money out of the business like I can spend, let's say, I don't know, five k a month on a lease for you know a fancy car, but five k a month—that's just the equivalent of two full-time employees, right? And that's sort of like my mindset. I'd rather have the two employees because I can grow the business much, much more than riding the Lambo, which, in my opinion, is just a liability, right? Like as soon as you drive that out to the showroom, it loses half its value. So um, that's—I don't know—that's just sort of like my thought process there. But yeah, so like I said, that is in terms of the agency, in terms of the coaching, it's nowhere near as high. Um, I think the MRR is 3K a month, something like that. Because um, obviously, you know, the small subscriptions and I do like to keep the coaching relatively small. Uh, just work with a select few people that really want to scale their business to the next level. So, because um, I've seen that, I've seen those comments, right? Like, oh, um, he, he's he's not even doing the agency, he's doing the coaching and stuff like that. But actually, it's vice versa. You know, the, the agency is like 90% of my income and the, the coaching is just a little side project, a little um, passion project, if you will. Next question, would you ever quit the agency if your coaching gets big enough? Um, no, though, to be fair, it's one of them. I, I really, so the way I see like my agency, etc., going forward is basically that the coaching covers all my costs and uh, that gives me the freedom to work with agency clients that I enjoy working with. So people that are in the you know the right niche, people that have the right frame of mind, people that are almost like you're working with friends and mates, etc. Right? Like passion projects, basically. So that is where I want to get to. And if that means that um, I need to scale the coaching up to 10k a month, then you know so be it. Then that is something that I will do. But that is basically my end goal. So the coaching covers all the costs, and the agency is um, basically running on passion projects and actually clients that I want to work with rather than clients that I'm taking on because I need the money. So that is sort of like my thought process there. So then in terms of YouTube, how have you grown your YouTube channel? 
Um, so I've had my YouTube channel since 2016. Um, it might actually be earlier, but 2016 is basically when I started uploading. It was fitness content for a while, so the first thousand subscribers was basically built on uh, fitness vlogs, um, you know, day in the life videos. Um, what do you call like when you do all the meal preps, um, like a full day of eating, that's it, full day of eating video, stuff like that, and then from there, I transitioned to uh, business and social media marketing, documenting the journey, etc., personal branding, and um, yeah, like I said, 2016, so at the time recording this, that's over four years of content, me posting every single week, at least once, so um, in terms of growing the YouTube channel, it's been a very slow and tedious process, but I, I didn't set out to build a you know million subscriber base uh, YouTube channel. You know, obviously the, I love and appreciate every single subscriber that comes my way, but for me, it's more of an outlet and a way to document my journey. So I like to look back at all the videos when I was just getting started. Um, and it's also for me, is just a way to basically get a little bit more exposure for my agency. So I've actually gotten quite a few, especially the watch me build videos. Those actually attract quite a lot of clients and because I'm very active, or I used to be very active on Instagram, it's sort of, you know, a way to um, go deeper in terms of the content um, for the people that follow me on Instagram. That is basically how it started. Um, YouTube is picking up a little bit of pace. I think I gain an average of 12 subscribers a day, which doesn't sound like a lot, but, you know, over time, you know, it, it does add up, which is much more than what I used to get. Um, so, you know, who knows? But, uh, the next goal is obviously 10k subscribers, but it's one of them. I don't look at the numbers every single day. I don't check the AdSense every single day. It's not like that. I just enjoy uploading. I like posting, you know, videos on YouTube. Now I've got like a content team that basically gives me a list of videos that um, I should record and topics that I should record, etc. So it's it's much easier for me to also record these videos. Um, and then every now and again, I'll do a little random video like this where I'll just do a Q&A or just do a vlog that's got nothing to do with the keywords or anything like that just because I actually enjoy recording in the videos um, ever been asked to take down a YouTube video uh, that's a, that was an interesting question um, so not necessarily take down a video there's been once where I've been asked to alter a video so when I was doing fitness content I got a sponsorship from my protein and the ne like the, the next video after I basically signed the deal etc was um, you know mentioned that I had the sponsorship and I went through all of the, the 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 things that I had to do in order to you know attain that sponsorship and what I had to do to continue working with my protein and how it worked commission wise. Um, so basically the deal was I promote their products on social media. I get an affiliate link. I promote that affiliate link. Anyone that pages through me, I get commission and I also sort of grow into the ranks of my protein. And then over time, I got a voucher, which basically gave me um, X amount to spend every single month on the my protein store and so on and so forth. And I broke that down like step by step how, you know, people can get a my protein sponsorship, what is needed, what is necessary, etc. And they saw that I was going to post that video. So I put up an Instagram story saying, Next week, I'm going to bring out this video, breaking it all down. They asked to see it, um, which I, you know, obviously sent to them. And there are a few things that I had to remove, and that was in terms of my commission and in terms of uh, my voucher that I was going to receive, and just in terms of like who I spoke to, etc. Which, uh, in my opinion, was a shame because I felt like that was the very first moment I had to sort of censor my channel in terms of transparency. Um, but all in all, you know, I, it was it was a great. You no know, source of sponsorships, a uh, great little deal. It actually ended, my contract ended the 1st of January 2020, so it is fairly recent still. Um, no hard feelings, I just didn't promote fitness products on my channel anymore, so uh, that is why the, why the deal didn't actually continue. And then I remember there's one time where I wanted a, I wanted drone footage of Liverpool, where, you know, my family is originally from, in my introduction video, but I wasn't going to Liverpool anytime soon, and I really wanted to upload um, a new introduction video, um, so like the little 10 second intro that I've got, I've got Amsterdam now, um, you know, instead, but anyway, I found drone footage online of Liverpool, which is just on YouTube, so I took that little bit of um, footage, and I incorporated it into my, um, you know, my introduction video, basically, and then a few months later, I got a message from a guy that said that that video was his, so I immediately asked him, you know, what is your contact details, and I'll add it to the, um, the description, so that if anyone else wants, you know, drone footage, they can, you know, basically go his way, and um, he basically said, no, I want I think he said I want 90 pounds for every video that I've posted. 
that contains that uh, introduction video, which ended up being like over 100 videos. So I just said, listen, if you know, you really want to be like that, if you don't want my exposure, because you know, my channel is like 600 times as big as his channel. I've got you know a big following. I've got a big email list. You know, I could easily make him about an extra 10k. You know, just just from promoting his his, his drone footage because his drone footage is good, um, and that's obviously the reason why I used it, right? Um, but he didn't want that. He wanted the the short term satisfaction, right? He wanted the money up front. So in the end, I actually changed my uh, introduction video and the videos that do have the introduction video with his footage in it. I just cut off. Um, actually, got a virtual assistant to basically go through all the videos, edit all the videos, remove the introduction. Um, so yeah, those were like sort of the two times that I had some issues with YouTube. Then what are you going to do after YouTube? Which was a strange question to be fair. It's like as if YouTube's like a like a sort of and an, I don't know an end in itself, and then once you hit a certain point, you you retire or something like that. Um, I've never really thought about that, and I've never really thought about quitting YouTube either. I think YouTube will always be there because I just love documenting the journey, and for as long as possible, um, and as long as you guys are interested in it, obviously, you know, I will continue to upload uh, YouTube videos and you know post YouTube videos. Um, so I guess it's, it's up to you guys, you know, as soon as you guys stop watching, then I think I'll, uh, I'll probably, you know, kick, you know, retire or unless I'll just keep posting for myself. Um, cause at the end of the day, you know, it is my, my channel, even though I, I appreciate everyone that's watching, you know, uh, even if there was only two people watching, I'll, I'll still continue uploading. But, um, yeah, so there's no real plan to, you know, after YouTube, cause I don't think there ever be, will be an after YouTube. So yeah. Uh, favorite non SMA YouTuber. I don't really watch SMMA YouTube um, because for me, like, I'm so, I'm always, everything is is my agency, right? You know, the ads, the, the morning check, everything I do is agency related. And YouTube for me is like a, a moment to sort of get away from it all, right? It's like a little mini distraction. It's a, something that I do at the end of the day. So I don't actually watch SMMA related content. Um, if I do, it will basically be either Ryan Wegner, who is a close friend of mine, um, and I just enjoy his content. Bradley Riley, why? Because we used to work together, and again, I enjoy his content. Aaron Kaiser, which is not really ANC related, it's Facebook ads related, just again, close friend of mine, enjoy his content. And then in terms of like YouTubers that I do not know personally and um, just enjoy watching, Matt Diavella is productivity and minimalism. Um, who else do you have? Nathaniel Drew is like mindset, minimalism, spirituality. And then we've also got Andrew Kirby, which is peak performance and sort of mindset as well. So those are sort of like my free YouTubers that I watch um, that I don't know personally, but just enjoy con you know, content-wise. Then for the last three questions, top five books for marketing. Um, I'll give you a top three, Dotcom Secrets, Expert Secrets, and Traffic Secrets, all books by Russell Brunson. All books that I really, really enjoy and literally just the top three books, in my opinion, for marketing. Then I'll give you two more sort of business slash marketing related. Steve Jobs' autobiography, which is something that I really enjoyed. I read it for the first time when I was 18. So that's all, you know, that's eight years ago already. Um, and the reason why I mentioned that book is because he focused a lot on the design. So basically the way they created the first iPhone, um, so iPhone 3, 3GS and 4, was they created the, the look and the aesthetics and the, you know, the whole like, sort of frame first. And then they fitted all the technology inside the phone. And they were so focused on branding, personality, you know, perception, etc., that that was pr primary. And then secondary was actually the technology. So that was just something that I thought was really interesting. And I got a lot out of the book, just the way Steve Jobs' mindset was in terms of aesthetics, etc. So um, I'm, you know, like I said, really recommend reading that book. And then um, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, which is the, the Nike story, which I thought was really interesting just because of the culture differences, how he marketed Nike at start uh, with, you know, influencers and athletes, etc. Just all in all, a really, really good story. Then um, second to last question, do you miss working as a personal trainer? Um, another good question. In terms of the what, what I miss is work that doesn't necessarily contain like that doesn't drain my mental capacity, if you know what I mean. So when you're in the ads manager, when you run the agency, it's all go, 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 go. And what I miss sometimes is to be able to do something physically rather than mentally and just to basically, you know, get out of your head, do something physically and almost like just switch off basically and just run an autopilot. But um, yeah, it's one of them. In terms of the personal trainer, I miss 
working with people like physically like you know i had uh, a lot of you know good friends there and even when i go to the gym now i still speak to everyone that i used to work with on a daily basis or you know weekly basis i should say uh, but i don't really miss the work itself and then last question uh, what was your best life moment and that was a really hard question i had to think about this for a while when i saw it i started contemplating about it and um, the first moment that springs to mind is the us road trip that i had last year why because obviously the Wi-Fi money made it possible, the ANC made it possible. Um, it's been on my bucket list since I was a young kid to go to America, to have that great American road trip, and I was finally able to do it. And to top it all off, I was able to do it with you know very, very close friends of mine, people that I've grew up with, people that I've literally known since I was two, three years old. You know, I've still got the same group of mates since I was, you know, a little kid. We've all grew up in the same streets together and we still stay in contact now. And to be able to do something like that with friends that were, you know, such close friends to me um and still are obviously you know it was just what like i said that was just the first thing that that uh, sprang to mind and the moment of it was just perfect you know i in terms of the agency it was all automated i had a few, few larger projects that didn't start till after the road trip same goes for the people that i was with you know they had um you know they were starting like either new courses uni new jobs etc and it all happened after the road trip so the what there couldn't have been a, uh, a better moment for us to go on that road trip and all in all it was just an amazing experience and yeah like i said that was that's the first thing that springs to mind but anyway those were the questions hope you enjoyed this video i hope you got some out of it i hope you know i was centered and you know i didn't butcher the video entirely um like i said you know i am recording this on my iphone because my camera is uh, has already moved the apartment so um yeah like i said hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching if you made it this far please leave this video with a thumbs up if you have not subscribed to the channel yet make sure you do it, it really does help this channel grow and i'll see you all in the next video